Talkers, I'm Catherine Decina Saplin, and today we're talking about culture shock. Specifically, the culture shock that I experienced after living in France for 10 years and moving to Belgium. Number one. So I talked about this in my last video, which you should check out. But in France, one thing that they do is they say bonjour. And then I moved to Belgium and nobody says guten Tag. Like the older people would say it back to me, but the younger people would sort of give me this weird look and scurry off. I didn't understand what the heck was going on. And so I came home and I complained about it to Prince Charming. And he explained that, yeah, we don't talk to strangers in Belgium. That's weird. I was like, no, it's not. It's completely normal and I'm fighting for this. The argument comes to a point when Prince Charming pointed out that they don't do it in America either. It was a French thing that I learned. <laughs> and my mind was blown. Number two. Belgium is known for its fries and chocolates, but I didn't expect there to be fries and chocolate shops everywhere. I mean, it's, it's great. Thumbs up. I know in a previous video I complained about this, but past me was an idiot because the fries here, oh my gosh, they are so amazing. They really are, and the chocolate. Oh guys, the chocolate. The chocolate. I, I don't know what, what magic they sprinkle into the fries and chocolate here, but it, it's there. The fries and chocolate shops would be comparative to like bread shops in France. It'd be hard not to find a bread shop. It's like over here, it's hard not to find a chocolate shop and a fry shop, it's just, no. Number three. So France has the Tour de France. I think because of this, a lot of French people really get into cycling, but there's a difference between the cyclists in France and the cyclists in Belgium. The cyclists in France are people who are into it as a sport versus the cyclists in Belgium. And I don't wanna give the impression that the Belgians aren't into cycling as a sport because they are, but there's this whole other category of cyclists and that's the commuters. And the most interesting thing about the biking culture over here is just the bikes and the contraptions that you can put on the bikes. I, I did not know that this stuff existed. Like, I found out after talking to Belgians that most Belgians own at least two bikes. People have their like mountain bike for when they're like really gonna go and do the trails. Then they have their city bike. And then if they have kids, they might have the kid bike. Oh my gosh, all this stuff is so cool. And I like an electric bike. I hear they're really hard to pedal, but they go so fast. Pedal in, pedal in as hard as I can, and then some old person will just zoom by me. It's like, I want that bike. Yeah, all the bikes are really cool. Also, there are bike lanes everywhere. Like, it's great that the cyclists have a specific area on the road so that they don't have to worry about cars, but at the same time, when you're driving, you have to really be on the lookout and aware of the bike so that you don't hit them. So that's different. Number four, Belgium is a country that is about the size of the state of Maryland in the United States. And that's small, comparatively. What that means is everything's really close. So to give you an idea of how close I am to everything, I live in West Flanders, literally on the border of France, like across the street, that's France. If I go north 30 minutes, we have a beach, that's amazing. We live an hour from Ghent, which is where Prince Charming's family lives. And we're only two hours from Brussels, which is the capital. If you go like three or four hours like that direction, you're in the Netherlands. And then if you go like five hours in that direction, you'd be in Germany. Like I could leave the country in under six hours, no matter which way I go. That, that's amazing. Everything is so close. Number five. So the Belgians are multilingual show-offs. That's probably really mean because most Belgians that I've met are very modest about their lingual skills, but they have impressive lingual skills. Oh my goodness. I can count on one hand the number of people that I have met who didn't speak French or English, and that's two. Everybody else speaks English, they speak French, they speak German, they speak Latin. Not all of them together, but like most of the people that I've come across with, I've been able to communicate. And I'm so impressed by this. Like, like my children are so lucky. They're going to school in Belgium and hopefully by the end of it, 
they'll know Dutch, French, English, German, and Spanish, and then they can know five language, and then that will be impressive because being trilingual here isn't that impressive. Like, I was so awesome in France because I spoke English and French. Even when I learn Dutch, it'll probably be, oh, you're trilingual. So is everyone else. <sighs> so there's my list. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Be sure to ring the bell for notifications if you want to know when my new videos come out, and all my links are in the description below. If you didn't know, I read a blog, and you should definitely check it out because it's awesome. And if you just love me so much and you want more, you should definitely follow me on Twitter because I post random stuff there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Tootsies, me applesies. There used to be a time when I could make meringue. It's not difficult. It's egg whites and sugar and cooking. And I don't know what's wrong with me, but for the past six batches that I've made, I have just failed. I recently made a batch, except they're completely burnt on the bottom. 